Hello, thank you for joining me. My name is Tobel. I've got a couple new videos coming out for you that are specifically going to be tutorials on how to do certain things in the X4 universe. These videos are going to be listed in the playlist to the right. So if you are have a question about a specific subject, just take a look for that. Click on the video and hopefully there'll be a description that explains what I cover in that video. Uh, in this video, the first video, I'm going to cover basics of your ship, how to get out in the world, how to use the map, and how not to lose your mind in space. The next couple of videos I make are going to be more advanced with topics such as how do I hire and buy ships, how do I order my crew or my AI captains to do stuff, and how do I do things like trade, how do I make money in this game through trading. I'll also cover a video or make a video that covers how to make money in other ways. You don't have to trade. You definitely don't have to trade to make a living. Uh, I like trading just because I can buy my AI captain and tell him to go work for me. He'll do all the thinking for you if you give him a little bit of uh, help. Hello. So we're going to be jumping right into this video. Um, I have chosen, now of course you're not going to be right here if you're starting from scratch. You'll be at the main menu. I've chosen the Young Gun Start under New Game. This has a starting in the Black Hole Sun sector with an Elite Vanguard and 10,000 credits. Feel free to start with the Dedicated Warrior or the Untested Explorer. You will start in a different system with a different ship, but really the mechanics should stay the same. We're going to be talking about the same map and the same controls. However, your system name might be something different. Sector. I always say system, by the way, too. So please forgive me if I use the wrong terminology there. But this is the Black Hole Sun sector. We are in Black Hole Sun 4. This is the zone number. So we're in Black Hole Sun 4. If we traveled all the way over here, we might be in Black Hole Sun 2 or Black Hole Sun 3. Not every sector will have a numerical value, but that's just so if you're in a sector with some numbers, you understand that, uh, generally speaking, there's only one named sector, like Black Hole Sun, but you might have some numbers to help you figure out which part of the hexagon you're in. We'll get back to the map in just a second, but you do start here on the dock. In We are in a Argon equipment dock. You might be in a different station, but most stations have similar features. For example, you can go up to the first uh, computer terminal you see here and do a couple things to your ship. You can check out some information. I'm going to hit escape because I don't want to overload us too much. Or you can upgrade your ship, which we'll get to here in a bit. You also can enter your ship from the uh, podium here. But I like to use the shortcut of Shift D to warp into our teleporter pod. Let me back up here. And we're in a nice little teleporter pod inside of our ship. And our controls are right over here. You can also get in and out of your ship by just walking up these stairs. You can only do this when your ship is docked on a station or on another ship. When you're in space, you can leave your ship by going to the transporter room and uh, selecting your spacesuit. And holy crap, that is amazing, and we're definitely going to do it because there's nothing more fun than floating outside in space away from your lifeline into a cold, voidless doom. So moving right along, we're on the station, and we can interact with the station in a couple of ways. I'm going to go down here into the uh, tra uh, transporter room and check out some of these offices. If you have a quest, and you will have a quest at some point, hopefully, that tells you to come into the station and dock and talk to someone. Their office will be yellow. And you'll see their name listed on the right. You can click on that, and you'll be down. Oh, who was that? I found you, friend. And you're into their office, so you can talk to them, do whatever you need to do. And instead of having to walk all the way back, you can just hit Shift D to warp back to your ship. Very cool shortcut. It's one of my favorites, and I use it quite often because I like to buzz around stations and run around like crazy. So let's take a look at what we can do on our ship. I'm going to sit down. And this is the quick information screen. You can do a couple things from here. Specifically, one of the neat things you can do is upgrade your ship. If any of you have played Elite Dangerous, this will look incredibly familiar once we get into this menu system. Before we do, though, I want to tell you that you definitely can get up from your ship, uh, from your seat here, or you can press Control D. You can undock by hitting Shift D. Slightly confusing. Sometimes, if you get excited, you might get up from your ship right after you hit undock by hitting shift D and then going crap I meant to stand up and press control D. If you get bugged at any point in the game where you're you're in your cockpit, you're in your seat, but your controls aren't working, I generally try to stand up and get back in my seat. If that doesn't work, I quick save by pressing F5 and then you can load the game by going to the menu and hitting your save. 
that sometimes can get you out of some buggy, awkward situations where the game just doesn't know what you're doing. So since we're here at an equipment dock, I want to explain that this option is only available at equipment docks, wharfs, and shipyards, as far as I've seen so far. Uh, there's going to be other places you can repair your ship and upgrade it. But right now, for the most part, I've seen it at the equipment docks, the wharfs, and the shipyards. I'll talk more about wharfs and shipyards in just a bit. We're going to click on Upgrade, Repair Ships. This is the first screen you look at. I love this view. It definitely reminds me of Elite Dangerous because you can see the modules. And if you click another module, like say you're going to go to the weapons and pick a new weapon, you'll watch as this weapon changes out to a new one, which is kind of awesome. The one thing I don't like in this particular view is the lighting. This might be because my graphic settings are a little too shadow heavy. It might I've got my settings to ultra right now, and it might just have too many shadows going on. And I don't like how dark some of the views are. So we'll mess with some of those settings down the road and see if we can't come up with a better solution. But when you're on this screen, this was really confusing for me before. What I'm gonna do is actually escape out, or let's see, reset to top view, escape out. We'll go back to upgrade because I don't want anything changed yet. What took me a minute to understand is whenever you click something, if I say I'm upgrading my engine, this is the engine I have. It's an all around Mark one. Let's say I want to go faster in combat. So I'm going to upgrade to a combat Mark one. You might think, okay, well, how do I add that to my list? Right. It, to me, add to shopping list means, oh, we're going to add this one thing. But in fact, it takes you to the final, are you sure you want to check out? This is basically the Amazon checkout button. If you click add to shopping list, whatever you've changed, it's going to ask you if you want to do this. And the only thing we've changed is we've added or we swapped out one weapon. But it's going to tell us that it's just the ship. It's a little confusing at first, right? So we're going to cancel the order, and I'm going to kind of explain a little bit more about how to upgrade and move parts around. What you want to do is actually you can change multiple things at a time and once you're happy with your loadout, that's when you go to add to shopping list. So let's say we were going shopping like crazy. Now, we only have 10,000 credits because I'm doing the same start as you. And realistically, you're not going to be changing too much at the start because you can't afford anything. Um, the only thing you might want to do is increase your travel speed, and we'll get to that in a bit. So I've swapped out the all-around Mark 1 with the travel Mark 1. So you can see that the red means that I'm taking this off, and the green means I'm adding this on. Okay? let's say I also want to uh, change my weapons. I hate lasers. I'm going to go with missiles. Boom. We've added a missile launcher and removed our pulse laser. My shields suck. I'm going to add better shields. You also can see this change, which is pretty nice. All right. We've added a new shield, replaced the old shield. Now, nothing, none of this has been confirmed. None of this has been started yet. I'm just showing you that you can go through multiple tabs and make multiple changes and it's all going to show up on the shopping list. You also can see what stats are being changed. Now it will show you a compiled list of the stat changes. So if you want to see what one particular thing does, you may have to do a little dance like this where I'm looking, okay, this does 978, this does 1467, right? So you may have to do a little bit of micro on those to see the changes um, or specifically only look at one part at a time. So we've made a bunch of changes to the ship and we want to try to buy it. This is your kind of, uh, this is like your, your checkout in Amazon. This is your cart, okay? You've added a bunch of stuff to your cart. You're taking off things, you're adding things in. Add to shopping list, it kind of condenses it all to say, hey, you're modifying one elite Vanguard. This is the total cost of the modification. So if we could afford it, we'd press confirm order, and there actually would be a little bit of a delay because your ship's not made of magic you definitely have to have someone swap out the parts right so there might be a minute two minute delay in modifying your ship of course we're broke so we're not going to do this but it's nice to tell us that you're basically broke it does tell you if you can't confirm the order it tells you why this is also interesting it does tell you if there's not enough resources on the station so your order may be delayed because it's trying to find those parts basically you go to get your brakes checked out and they say hey we don't have this part here we have to order it from our local shop got it the other thing I want to cover is software software is kind of unique in X series there's a lot of stuff that can be automated or improved in the form of software I'm not going to get too in-depth right now but one of the main things I like is the long-range scanner 
increases the radius of your active and not active per se, but your passive scanning. When you're running through space, you're going to wind up seeing a little bit more out in space. I haven't really messed with the docking computer because I don't mind docking the ship too much. But in theory, this might be a thing where if you get within a radius of or distance of 15 kilometers, maybe I'm sure it's closer than that, maybe two kilometers, the ship will automatically dock to the station for you. This is useful if you have big ships that wind up colliding with things, or if you just hate docking, I would look into getting the docking computer. I personally don't, but that's not a big deal. You definitely can if you're interested. Um, the police scanner and basic scanner have functionality for scanning other ships, and there's different software depending on where you go. The trading computer extension normally helps you find better deals. You can right click on anything in the software list or anything in any list and pull up the encyclopedia. I will tell you, EgoSoft kind of rushed the encyclopedia it seems like because there's not a whole lot of information out there. Some things you won't even be able to find. And I apologize, in the shipyard there's a lot of background noise and it sounds like someone's dying behind us but it's just a ship coming nearby. We'll be out of the shipyard here in just a few minutes, or excuse me, the dockyard or wherever we are. Uh, the equipment dock. So we've covered how to buy things, how to upgrade things. It's very basic and we'll get into this more down the road, but I wanted to show you right away if you just don't want to jump right in and you're like, well, what the hell does it, why does it green? Why, why does it not adding my stuff? It's kind of an all in one shopping list, right? So think of this as your cart and Amazon, and this is the checkout screen. So we're going to cancel everything and we're going to go ahead and take off. So I'm going to hit the undock button. Now you'll notice my mouse is a cursor right now, okay? It changed to this navigation symbol, but I'm not actually turning my ship. So what you might have to do is hit shift. Now this is if you're in a mouse and keyboard setup. If you have a joystick, of course, your joystick is going to control your axis of movement. If you have a HOTAS, that's an all-in-one throttle and control, you'll be controlling your throttle independently. What I'm doing and how I just did that was I'm in, I guess it's like a, for lack of a better term, I call it mouse mode and steering mode. When you're in and you do this, it says steering mode. So what I'm doing here is pressing shift and space. That toggles between two modes. One is steering mode. Wherever your mouse moves in this edge of a circle, this invisible circle, your ship's going to turn to. I use this when I'm doing dogfighting or when I'm trying to make tight turns or like when I'm navigating the dockyard. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you because you have red camouflage. Um, the other option is to press shift space. You'll notice my mouse is more free. It actually doesn't control where the ship's pointing. But if I hold left click and I drag, it suddenly turns into a bit of navigation. I use this when I'm just kind of free floating out in space and making long, slow turns, or if you're in a bigger ship. All right, so we're, we're pointing the right way. We're pointing out of the station. We're gonna scroll the mouse wheel up and accelerate. If you're feeling brave, you can hit tab, and that's actually going to put you into a burst mode afterburner. And holy crap, it's fast, so be careful about what you're pointing at. I will say a nice thing about uh, EgoSoft and X4, they do forgive you for bumping into the station, and you actually can hit the damn thing at like full speed and just bounce off like it's made of rubber. Sure, we'll suspend our disbelief for a bit. So we're out of the station, great. What is all this? What am I looking at? What's the important information? Okay, so down here in the center is your 3D radar. You can cycle between a 3D radar and a top-down view by pressing Control M. Imagine this as a bird's eye view above everything, looking straight down. So we are the tiny little green dot, and this is the equipment dock that we just left. The other icons are all small ships. I'm going to press M. So you can see kind of the same uh, representation in a different manner. So this is the all-powerful map. You can see that it's very similar in terms of your symbols from your radar and the map. You can click on ships to highlight them. You can right-click on them to interact with them. You can do the same from the radar. You can at least left-click on them. And you might have to press F instead of right clicking on them if you want to interact from this view if you're not on the map. So if I target and I've targeted him and you see the information pulling up here on the right panel if I've targeted him and I want to see what I can do with him I can press F to bring up the interaction menu and we really can't do a whole lot. We could calm him but he's too far away. 
Uh, we could try to board him, but we don't have any Marines on board, and that's a more complicated procedure, which we'll get into way in the future. So, let's get back to the map, because I think as a new player coming to X4, this is probably one of the most intimidating things about this game. It is incredibly powerful. It is 3D. It has tons of information on it, and holy crap, what is all this information, right? If you're looking at this map, and by the way, I've changed a couple of things in my game settings, so you may have something extra, like something like this. It's like, it might say a bunch of stuff. It might have all these different things listed, and you're like, I don't want to look at this much information. No problem. If you have something like this that is showing you bought wares or sold wares, you can click the little trade filter. It's like the power off button for the trade filter. And if you have this expanded, and this is in your way, you can press the little filter button here to make it disappear. Okay, so that helps you get some data out of your screen. The next couple of things we're going to look at is we're on the first tab from here, the object list. This is everything that is currently in our sector that we're looking at. If we zoom out, we actually don't see these ships because they're not really on this particular zoom level. Uh, the minor crane is because we have it targeted still. If I zoom in, all of a sudden this list expands and shows you every single NPC ship that's in the area. Yes, every single one of these ships is flying its own independent action. Uh, if this guy is doing a trade run, he will continue to do his trade run all the way through. He's not going to get to the edge of your vision and disappear. He actually will fly his route. You could track this ship all the way through space until he gets to his uh, destination. Uh, it's amazing and it adds a ton of depth to the game. You'll wind up flying in the middle of nowhere and finding fighter patrols and finding NPCs that are just doing their missions. You'll see here that the little equipment dock has a nice wrench icon. This helps you locate this type of dock. Okay, equipment docks always have a wrench. Other stations have other symbols, which we'll get to here in just a bit. So we've got for now, we're going to ignore some of this data up here. I did expand this on accident, and I apologize. This is basically a subsection breakdown of what this station has. You see all these different modules on it? These are all indicated here. So it's telling us, uh, what is it made out of? Well, we don't know because we've really not scanned it, right? So it's got a bunch of question marks. Now, we were in the maintenance bay. We came out of the maintenance bay and flew over here. So we know what the maintenance bay is, but we don't know what this part of the ship is or this part of the ship is because we've not flown close enough to see it again we'll get to that in a bit you don't have to worry too much just yet so let's get out of the map i don't want to overwhelm you with too much uh you know basic map stuff right now if you want to learn let's work on some controls and learn some controls we'll go back into shift space right and i'm going to scroll the mouse wheel around the first thing i'd recommend and again if you're brand new to the game this might be useful. If you've played a little bit, you can skip ahead until we're at a different section. And in fact, I want to put another break, uh, or not a break, but a timestamp in the description to let you know, you know, when we're done talking about navigating. Um, some basic functionality here. I'm a mouse player because right now I like that setup. Even for combat, I don't find it all that annoying. I just prefer to do it by mouse, especially in X4. In other games, I like to have a HOTAS setup, but for now, I'm going to stick with the mouse until I see or get a more advanced uh, uh, ship. So as you're flying close to stations, you may notice that the will flash blue for just a second. That's telling you that you're actually scanning that part of the station, and you're learning a little bit about what that station makes, what that station needs, and what those parts are called. You don't have to worry about that right now. It's just something you may notice as you're flying close. You'll hear a little ding, and that whole section will turn blue. So one other neat navigation tool is something called flight assist uh, flight assist is always active by default right so right now if i turn my ship quickly to the right my thrust will counter my movement and i will start flying forward again that's really not how non newtonian physics works uh, that's not how you know inertia works in ships but we have to suspend our disbelief that's how most space games happen what we could do though is really fun is press control space this turns flight assist off what that means is I can start to turn my ship to face the station and you see those little flecks of white that indicates that we're flying sideways so our movement is actually this direction and I apologize for the green this is an automated docking information stuff this is telling us how to dock with the station I pressed shift D to cancel that 
So we are floating basically left. Our, our direction of movement is this direction, but we're pointing in a different location. This is really nice if you want to flip. So say someone's chasing you, right? You can press control space, flip all the way around. Of course, I didn't have the right thing engaged. Let's try that one more time. So we'll press control space. Flight assist disabled. You'll notice that it says here that it's disabled. And you can flip around. Let's follow this guy here. He's red. We'll take a pot shot at him with the space bar. And we blew him up. Now, I blew him up. He was red, so he was a criminal. That means that, for the most part, your local faction is not going to be pissed off about that because, to them, you're just helping them deal with the lawless criminal. So you'll probably get a message about, thank you for helping us deal with this threat, etc., etc. So, again, to exit flight assist, I'm going to press control space. And your ship, you may have to move the mouse wheel and work on the acceleration again to get yourself going again. What I like to do to get comfortable with this uh, setup is to move around the station because it's a nice stationary object and get comfortable with using your command. So not just your mouse navigation, but also WASD. These are strafe left, strafe right, strafe up, and strafe down. Q and E are your roll commands. Now I'm pointing left and I'm also at the same time, I'm holding the A key. What this is doing, and I'm slowing the ship down, as you can see in the little information bar down here. By the way, the white line is our hull, and the uh, blue line is your shields and energy. These are shared between your shields and your turbo, your boost. So you see I'm boosting, and that blue line's going down. That means we're using some of that energy, so you got to be careful about using tab while you're in combat so you don't let yourself uh, sit there with no shields. All right, so I'm going to go to the station... And what I'm going to do is I'm going to circle uh, circle the station just using my strafe keys. Right? So I'm, I'm putting my throttle at zero, which I can do with the space bar, or excuse me, with the scroll wheel, or I can hit backspace. Backspace will stop all motion on your ship. So this is a way to get comfortable navigating around the station. I like to just put your speed up to a moderate amount and just kind of get used to strafing, right? So get used to how it feels. Try try rolling around a little bit. Uh, I'm pressing W here to kind of help myself up over the hump while I'm pointing in a different direction. That's the easiest thing for me. And now what I'm gonna do is intentionally hit, uh, we'll, and it, we'll strike this section right here with the front of our ship, all right? It's gonna look scary. It's not that bad. Watch my shield bar. Boom, right there. I lost a little bit of shield, but it didn't really hurt my ship. Now, if you're going full bore uh, with your turbo going, you might do a little bit of damage to your ship. But overall, EgoSoft has made it so that it's a little bit forgiving to have accidents with inanimate objects. In real life, if you become a space pilot in our future space program, please do not take this advice literally. It probably won't work, and you're going to destroy a very important station or ship. Thank you. So... All right, we've got the basics of navigation, right? I'm, I apologize if I if I sound like I'm trying to be, um, you know, I don't I don't mean to come off across as uh, as dumbing anything down or or making it, you know, whatever. I just don't know where everyone's coming from, so I want to make everything as clear as possible so that no matter who you are in the gaming world, you know how to move around the world because that's step one, right? So fly around the station, try pressing tab to get used to how fast you're burning around. You'll definitely get there when you start moving around the world. So. I'd like to move into the map, just a little bit of the overview on how to use the map and maybe how to combine that with some of our navigating tools and our autopilot. So we need to explore this world. We're going to click on the superhighway here. I'll talk about the superhighway in just a bit, but the first thing we're going to do is right click. Oh, you can't right click on it and have this happen. Okay. We're going to zoom in right in front of it, right click on the black space and say start guidance to position. You'll see this yellow line. This is basically your navigation your space GPS telling you where to go you see now we have an orange highlight first off and we have an orange triangle this is telling us where to go to get to our mission or to our guidance point awesome it's right over here this gate does look like it's gonna suck you down into a vortex of death don't worry it's actually a uh, an instant transport to the other side and it's a uh, one way so as soon as we go into this blue thing and, and you'll notice by the way 
you can see movement behind me, I'm actually keeping my speed in the menus because of one option that I turned on, settings, game settings, uh, maintain speed in menus. This is a personal preference. The two things I've changed, I turn auto roll off and I turn maintain speed in menus on because I tend to float around in my menu a lot while navigating from point A to point B. So you'll see us here in the green dot, we are continuing to move towards the super highway. A super highway will instantly transport you to the its other side. So we're gonna come out over here. If you're ever confused about a symbol you see on the map, you can hit the legend and get more information about it. So you'll see that the super highway here is dark blue. There's something called the local highway, which we're gonna cover in a bit, which is pretty fun. But for the moment, we're 17 kilometers away. I wanna get there quicker. So I'm gonna engage something called travel mode. I pressed shift one. And what this is going to do is continually accelerate our speed up to a certain point. You'll see it said that down here, it said travel mode activated. When I get closer, I'm going to press shift one to disengage it. And I'm gonna press backspace to stop our ship. You can also use the mouse wheel to slow yourself down a bit. All right, so we're right in front of this gate. And we're just gonna fly right on in. If you wanna look around while you're flying, you can hold shift and the middle mouse wheel to take a peek. This is the free look default uh, keybind. All right, into the black abyss we go. Again, one huge thing, or I don't think I've mentioned it in this video, X4 has no loading screens other than that first loading screen you see. So it's freaking awesome. You can get on and off your ship, on a station, through a highway gate, anything, and there's never a loading screen. All right, we've, camp we've come out a different area. Where the hell are we, right? So let's take a look at our map. We are now in Black Hole Sun 5. So you see how we're still in this big hex. We're still in the Black Hole Sun sector, but now we're in Zone 5. And it looks like we've got more toys. We've got a power plant here, which is a, an NPC station. And these guys are heading off in this general direction, right? So I want to see what they're up to. So to help us navigate, we're going to right click and start guidance to the point. Uh, one cool thing you can do if you don't really want to worry about going from point A to point B is use the autopilot. I'm going to do this by hitting shift A. I believe you can also do this from the uh, quick menu, which is the enter key. We can click autopilot here. I'm going to close this for the minute. All right, I'm going to hit escape. Apparently you can't hit enter twice. It brings up this uh, other mode. These are the different modes you have and we'll get into these in just a bit. So I'm going to hit shift A. Now you'll notice one thing. We're still going kind of slow. The autopilot for whatever reason right now doesn't have the ability to use the fancy travel mode. So we're going to help them out. I just press shift one and you'll notice that there's a bit of a delay, but he does eventually start speeding up and he's starting to do a little bit of a left turn to face over to the, uh, the point we marked. We see some combat in the distance. This might be a fun time to take an example of some of the combat. I want to press shift one to get out of our fast travel. I'm going to press shift A to cancel autopilot. I don't want this to distract me right now. So if you want to cancel navigation that you've set, you can press shift G. This will clear off that particular uh, thing you put in. I'm going to change to my favorite method of combat, which is shift space. I'm going to cl left click on this guy, or I can press shift E to target the closest enemy. We can see that his shields are down and his hull is at 100%. So no one's really hit him the rest of the way yet. They've taken out his shields. So we're going to press tab and burst in a bit. All right, we're pretty close. I'm going to start holding the space bar and fire our tiny little pistol. Are we fighting a Rubik's cube? I think we're fighting a Rubik's cube, guys. This is fan. This is fabulous. Okay, cool. It blew up. The space bar by default is your fire cannon at the cursor. Not at the cursor, sorry. It, it actually, you see that there's a dot inside of our little circle there. The dot is your leading guide. So if you're, if you have a moving target, you can't shoot it exactly where the target is because there's ballistics involved. The same thing in space. You have to aim in front of the ship. The closer you are, the closer the dot is. If you press space, our guns will fire automatically where that circle is. I don't really want to piss off our allies, so I'm not going to do that just at the moment. But realize that that's an aiming reticle, and to make it easier, you can just hold space, 
and your ship will shoot at that aiming reticle automatically. We are in the elite vanguard, so it's a little bit weak. We only have two turrets, and they're kind of like puny little um, beam lasers or uh, pulse lasers, I believe. They definitely can take down some of the lower uh, fighter ships that you'll encounter, but you really don't want to go up against big fleets with those. I love how this looks, by the way, the, uh, the silhouetting effect. I'm holding S basically to strafe down while I am kind of coming towards it to give it that neat little drifting look. Let's left click on the station and find out where we're at. All right, so this is an Argon defense platform. I'm gonna slow down a bit, press M and see where we're at on the map, right? So we came in way back here. This was the super highway exit, right? We spat out over here and we've flown over here so far and we've unlocked a couple things. We've unlocked this defense platform and we see people are still continuing to go this way. So I'm gonna go back to this guidance and kind of aim towards it. Press shift A, shift one to engage our fast travel and then we're just gonna let him take control. AI take the wheel. So while you're uh, doing your fast travel, now keep in mind, it just does speed up pretty quick. So you have to keep an eye on, in the background you can still see things. So you can see if you're about to slam into a station. Um, so there is a danger of using the option keep your speed going in menus so be careful about that but it's nice to be able to just kind of look around a little bit so you're not always just staring at a red you know an orange sun we definitely can get a lot of information what if we want to check out the station what it sells let's right click on it go to information and see what kind of stuff we have we can tell what personnel are there we can't tell what's stored there because we haven't docked or scanned it all the, all the while we're doing this, we're letting our ship handle the navigation. He's starting his turn there. You saw the turn a little bit. Now, this might be a nice point to slow down. Press Shift A, and we'll come to a complete stop. So the great thing about X4 is the scale of the universe. Um, you remember how far the station seemed when we first came out of the gate. Do you remember how far the gate was when we first came out of the equipment dock, right? Those are so tiny. Man, that was 40 kilometers, 30 kilometers. As we continue to zoom out, it really sets the scale of the universe. We haven't even scanned or uncovered the thing that's in front of us, which is a jump gate. But we can see it in the distance. So whatever you see, if it's floating in space, you can get to. I don't think you can go to the sun. I am curious about jumping into the sun, but we won't do that today. Um, one aspect of exploration is your long-range scanner. You can access this from Shift-3. And just for information, Shift-2, since we've not talked about it, is scan mode. This helps you scan and identify things on stations. We'll get to that in a bit as well. So long-range scan mode. In order to use your long-range scanner, this is important because as far as I can tell, it's not mentioned anywhere. Hold down the R key and you'll hear a charging sound. You want to let it build up and then let go before it overloads. And I'm going to hold down R and let you hear the overload sound. That means that I overloaded the sensor. I didn't time it right. It's almost like a little mini game. We're going to try it again and release R before it gets too high pitched. Boom. That's your pulse wave. This is basically like a ping from a submarine sonar. And you'll notice on our map, we've got a question mark because and I'm going to go on my big map now. This is just outside of our range of our ship scanner, but our long range scanner uncovered it. So let's go take a look. What did we just uncover? You can see it for sure. And we know it's a station because it's pretty big. So I'm going to hit shift F1 and I'm not going to turn on the autopilot. We'll just control it ourselves. But as soon as this gets within our scanner range, maybe one or two more hexes here, boom. Unlocks as being Graphene Refinery 3. You can see another ship on the path there. Now this isn't necessarily, a, a, you know, we're going to collide because we're at different heights. Remember that this is a 3D map, so we're looking at a top-down view in space. I'm gonna press M so I don't run into the station. Shift one to turn off flight fast mode and kind of scroll back on the mouse wheel to slow down a bit. Uh, so this is a graphene refinery. This is just a refinery that is NPC controlled that produces graphene. Uh, 
there's more aspects to this that we're going to get into, but again, I don't want to overwhelm you at the moment. I just want you to get in the game, learn how to get from point A to point B, and honestly, the most fun that I have in X4 is exploring, is finding out what's in the universe. I like to do missions to do that, and so what I'm going to try to do is get us over to this jump gate we saw. Let's look around and see if we can see it using our free look. There it is, floating in space. We're star stargate in space, basically. All right, so I'm going to point at this jump gate. We can't click on it yet. So shift one. So what I'm going to teach you the rest of this video, and this is going to be wrapping up pretty soon, so I apologize this went a little bit long, um, but I'm going to wrap it up with um, how to get missions and how to do a, a basic mission. This is normally one of the easier methods uh, to start making money. I almost said an EVE Online. I don't know why I went with that one. Uh, it's one of the easiest ways to make money in the X Games. You basically start a mission from a station. Someone says, hey, I need I need a favor. I need, I need help. I'm going to pay you money. Boom. You accept the mission. You do the mission, and it completes instantly. Some missions are easier than others. Some missions are impossible. You can't take down a huge super capital trading ship with just your puny lasers. So this says it's going to the Grand Exchange, so we're going to kind of aim towards it just a bit. And we'll catch the ring, and which is fine. And it pumps us right in there. I love this view. Now we came out of the jump at the same speed going in. So remember, we're in this fast travel mode. I'm going to press Shift-1, scroll back a bit. What an awesome station. Very cool. So this is the hab, right? This is the hab wheel, where the rotation is so fast that it creates, you know, G-forces here. This is more like, um, this looks a lot more like Elite Dangerous, because Elite Dangerous used to have, or still does have, these docking stations or docking bays that are tiny little slits in the station that are so damn hard sometimes to come in and get, especially if you're coming in hot and uh, trying to have precious cargo, uh, or you're drunk flying, which, you know, I never condone, um, but often participate in with your friends. We are now in Talati space. Talati is a different faction in the game. I won't get into too much lore this episode just because I think I've run a bit long on it, but know that there are a couple different factions in the game. Each of them have unique styles, voices, stations, and ships. I love this ring. Let's have some fun. Let's go ahead and burn over. I'm pressing tab. I'm going to let go of tab here pretty quick. So cool. I love, I love to see the artwork and the theories behind some of these huge mega stations and sci-fi games right so i love the idea that you've got this little ring world set up and you've got habitation oh so cool i'm gonna sci-fi nerd over this so i have to i have to get away from it just a bit all right so where are we right we went through a gate let's zoom out a bit we're now in a green hex green hexes are talati stations or excuse me green hexes are talati uh, owned blue are argon or another race or faction that I can't remember offhand. It's slipping my mind. So what I'm going to do is show you one other uh, one other thing on the uh, map to help us with that. Under player information, we have a lot of stuff here. And maybe I should have led with this because it's really important to change our name. We're not Val, right? We are Captain... Right now we're Captain Tutorial. <laughs> so that's what we're going to change our name to. You also can change your logo of your ship. Uh, Amusingly enough, you actually can create your own custom logo, upload it into the game, or probably just transfer it over to a folder, and have that logo available. In my main X uh, series, we're playing with the Glowworm here, so we're going to continue with him right there. So cute, he's on the side of your ship. Um, but there are videos and guides out there right now if you want to make your own logo and put it on your ships. You've got a big, uh, basic overview on this tab about your, lo your, you know, your overall net worth, um, how many ships you own, how many stations you own. Inventory are things that are actually on your person, like med kits. Uh, these can be used in crafting items. Again, crafting is kind of beyond the scope of this video, so we will get into it in a bit, but realize that is an option. Uh, modifications are, I believe this is the um, modifications to parts, or maybe these are research modifications. Haven't really explored this too much, but what I'm thinking is, as you either do favors or uh, complete missions for factions, you unlock the ability to modify certain parts. You definitely can upgrade your spacesuit. While we're talking about it, and because we're so close to a cool ring thing here, 
I'm going to hit escape a couple times. We will come back to that. I'm going to hit control D to stand up in my seat. It's actually super cool, right? So the door's shut. I want to go into space. I'm going to hit my teleporter, spacesuit. Sure enough, we're in a freaking spacesuit orbiting a Talati freaking space station. It's actually kind of messing with my head. We are completely stopped, but because the station is rotating, it's a bit weird. You can hit F2 actually to zoom out a bit to get up behind the head look. F2 again, and you get to see your whole little platform. I'm always terrified of flying away accidentally from my ship. Like uh, when I play Kerbal Sp uh, Space Program and sacrifice them all to the space gods. Wonder how close we get. I kind of don't want to blow up in this, right? That, that kind of put a damper on the video. I've not even quick saved it yet. But it's fun. There's a lot of different things you can possibly do with the space, uh, the space suit. There are some missions, actually, where you have to get out of your space suit to repair things. And in fact, right now, by default, you do start with a repair gun. So if your ship gets damaged, I just left clicked on it. Uh, left click to target it. Oh, slow down, don't bump it. I'm going to press this backspace to stop. I can... At least I thought I could. I thought I had a gun by default. Do I not have my gun? There it went. Oh, spacebar. I forget that spacebar is your default firing tool. You start with a repair beam. So if you get your ship damaged and you don't feel like stopping, you know, going all the way over to an equipment dock, just stop your ship, get out, and shoot it with your repair gun. And you can repair any damage. It's a little slow, but it's still not bad if you're like seven jumps away uh, from the closest repair dock. I'm going to press Shift D to open up my bay. That was a bit close there, but it did open up and have a kind of a, an image of how to get on the ship. Let's get him back into this menu real quick. Uh, we were trying to find out the uh, other faction name. So logbook tells you the last couple of messages you've received. Account management, we're going to skip. And here's our factions and relations. Antigone Republic, of course. Uh, Antigone and Argon both share the blue coloring around their hexes. There are two factions so far of Paranid that I've uncovered. Paranid is a race of um, uh, theological race that is governed by a holy leader uh, because of the, the lore and the story that faction has split, and we'll get into that in a bit. Uh, Hativ, I never, for the life of me, can pronounce this system or this race. Hativa, sure, we'll go with that. Uh, Kach and Zenon are two races, I know, jokes aside, uh, are two races that you might encounter. Zenon are a machine race that basically Cylons. Let's just call them the Cylons, right, to make it easy. And Talati are... I don't know, we can call them the Frangi-ish. I think they're they're more lizardy, but they can be the Frangi for the moment. All right, so we've covered a lot in this video. Uh, we've covered basic movement, some of the map stuff, and the one thing that I did hope to show was how to do missions, but unfortunately, I don't see any missions available. Normally, you'd see a little orange icon on top of a station. I don't see anything quite yet of that nature, but... I do want to cover, while we're right here and we've got such a pretty station, I want to cover docking. So I'm going to click on the station and press Shift D to request docking. And they're going to, of course, say, no problem, come on in. So I'm going to follow these green beams of light. I'm rolling back my mouse wheel just a bit to slow down. As soon as you break the barrier, they're going to tell you where to go. If you don't request docking, your ship will automatically be given a slot to land in as soon as you break this uh, this space barrier. All right, so this is very similar for those of you who play Elite Dangerous. This is very similar in that um, it gives you some alignment on how to uh, dock your ship. Now, this is just my preference, okay? This is what I'm going to do. I'm facing the same direction as our silhouette over there. I'm rolling the ship to show you. That's the silhouette. That's the pad we're supposed to dock on. What I like to do, here's our navigation aids for docking. The top line is uh, roll. The center line is kind of your alignment. You want your center blue circle to be lined up with this red circle. The bottom bar is kind of twofold. It tells you in relation to your little red triangle, this is your ship. It tells you, are you lined up laterally? This is laterally. 
and then it also tells you how high off the ground you are. So right now we are at the correct angle of attack, the correct roll. We are at the correct alignment, and I'm creeping the ship forward. We're also laterally set up correctly because it's green on these two right here. So right there, we're almost there. And you see this is your forward and backwards position, right? So what you're wanting to do is get this little triangle lined up right with the bottom bar. So we have rolled the ship in the right spot because the top bar is green. We're looking at the right spot because it's green. The only thing left for us to do is go down. So I'm going to hold down S. I'm going to kind of tap S actually so I don't smash into the ground. And as soon as this gets closer, this is going to turn green and instantly dock us. Boom. We're down. We're docked. We can do whatever we want. We can take off again. Uh, we could take a look at the trade menu, which we'll get into a little bit later. Let's take a look real quick at what their station looks like. It's pretty. Can we go up here? I do like to explore the stations just a little bit, just to see what's going on here, because they're pretty fun. Oh, you just leave torpedoes out. That's fine. That's not a safety hazard. Um, I'm not going to talk to OSHA about that because you know what? I'm not. Uh, I'm not Talati. I don't know how they do. I don't know how OSHA Talati works. Again, you can still go downstairs here and find other folks hanging about. So that's roughly what I wanted to cover. I do want to try to get the basic coverage of missions. So real quick, let's undock. One other thing I kind of want to show you is a faster way to dock, one that I prefer, and it's going to autosave occasionally, by the way. So we'll have to wait for this autosave to happen. Lots of data, so the autosaves tend to take a bit, but they don't happen super frequently. However, that being said, if you just completed a mission that's worth, like, I don't know, 3 million credits, you may want to save the game manually. All right, so this is how I prefer to dock. I'm going to uh, target the system, the station, press Shift-D, and we got issued the same spot. I like to get everything lined up, including our uh, up and down, and then just move forward into the position. So we're, we're vertically in the right spot. Oh, I was a little bit too high. Let's try that one more time. Maybe we have to go below the line. Okay, so I'm going to go pretty low. So I'm lined up. I think I actually bumped it there for a second. Oh, maybe this dock's not going to do it. On Argon, I have a little bit better luck, but I can actually be at the right vertical height and immediately get docked down. I, I prefer to do it that way. You'll find your own method. It's just a little bit easier for me to come uh, at the correct vertical distance and go from there. Again, wrong button, right? Shift D to undock. All right, we'll quickly move off. I almost hit the wrong buttons. Let's get out of here. Let's burst out of here, right? There's no speed limits in space. All right, we're cruising out of here. Holy crap, that's a big planet over there. All right, so we are not seeing any missions or anything here. Let's get back to the other system. Let's jump on back to Black Hole Sun. Shift one, quick mode, quick travel mode. What I'm looking for specifically is a massive highway. And I don't really want to spoil this, but if you're exploring this area with me, we're going to get a little bit spoiled. Um, but I do want to show you how much fun this is, and this will help us find some missions. And I don't remember where it is. It's really bad of me, isn't it? For the life of me, I can't remember where it starts at. Let's look for some hints. Is anyone going anywhere in particular? You're going this way, so we'll go this way too. Maybe you know where it's at. We'll trust Intermediates, Trader, Ides, Vanguard. This is the model of the ship, I guess, not really a person. All right, so we're still going really fast out the gate. I'm going to hook a left turn here. And I'm going to trust that this trader knows where they're going. And what do I see in the distance? I see another station. I can see a little shiny. Looks like two stations at least right here. You get a little bit of reflection there. And we don't see anything on our scanner. And again, all we're looking for is a tiny little icon that indicates that we've got a mission. You also can see your missions in the list under mission offers. There's guild missions, which we'll get into here in a little while, and other missions. Other missions are kind of the ones that you normally start with. Like, hey, I lost my family heirloom because I don't know, I'm just dumb, and I need someone to help me find it. You're going this way. What if I look to my left? Do we see another gate over here? 
I don't see anything. Oh, I hit a shortcut that's apparently exit to desktop. That could have been horrible. Shift Q apparently is that shortcut. What was that? I see something over there. We'll go back that way in just a minute. I did see a uh, another station. All right, so we're coming up on two stations by, it looks like this uh, gas cloud. Maybe this is hydrogen. So this is a great time to take a look at the legend. Blue tiles mean gas region. So we are, in fact, inside a gas region, and we are, in fact, lucky enough to see a mission. Remember that orange-looking icon I told you we're looking for? That's what it is. You also can see this again. Mission offers other mission offers. Let's left-click on it to pull it up. Number of attacks against our property. Uh, number of persons help us with this. And now, here's I'm curious. I've not done one of these missions before, but I believe you can do this by just getting out of your ship and repairing. So what it's saying is it wants you to repair the trade station. They've got two leaks. We're going to accept it. Okay. It's telling us to go to a different station, which is all the way up here. So what I'm going to do is uh, it's already set as the waypoint. So we're just going to come out of the menu or come out of the map, hit Shift A. Yeah, sometimes... The autopilot's not the best at actually getting on task here. So let's flip them around. Shift A. Let's click on one of these. Shift A. And Shift 1. Okay. This is a mission we can do. Now the nice thing, we flew all the way over here, right? It'd be kind of a pain to fly all the way back, finish the mission, and come back. As soon as we finish the mission, we're going to get paid. So that's one nice thing about this particular way they've got this set up in X4. As soon as you do a mission, you get paid immediately. Um, with the exception of delivery missions where you're supposed to deliver something from point A to point B, it's a bit of a different case. But if you're doing a repair, a retrieval, which is kind of weird, right? You go out to retrieve something that someone owns, it, it just completes. I guess they hope you send it the next time you're at a mailbox. Who knows? So I've accepted the mission. Um, and you see what I did there, by the way. I watched the local traffic. Oh, this is up because I clicked the station, by the way. If you're wondering why this thing has some information on it. I think we actually can expand this. Can we turn this off completely? It's the same as this button here. Okay. Uh, what I like to do is get some hints from the local traffic. Because generally, traders are going from point A to point B. So again, another trader going off to this side. And it looks like definitely there's some stations over there. So this is how one way you can help explore, uh, to help you explore your sector is to just watch where the traffic's going and then autopilot that direction or just fly yourself in that direction. There is a little bit of exploration needed at the start of the game until you discover the, for lack of a better term, I like, I like to call it the hyperloop, but it's really just a really big local highway that goes through different sectors. I don't want to spoil it for you. Um, I will include it in some later videos, but because, honestly, I can't remember which sector it's in right now, uh, we're not going to spoil it in this video, because it's pretty neat to discover. He's actually disengaging because he got close to the station, and he doesn't want us to hit it, so I'm going to press Shift-1 to get a little bit closer. And you'll notice we have two guidance recommendations here, because we had two data leaks on our mission. So if you forgot what your mission says, we can press M go into accepted missions under the mission manager and again it starts on guild missions we want to look to other missions what do we need to do and there's all of our mission information I'm getting pretty close so I'm gonna press menu shift one backspace and I knew it'd be pretty close to the station but I, that's why I pointed myself away from it so if you're navigating to a station manually I do recommend and you think you're gonna be in the menus I recommend pointing away from the station just so you don't run into it and terrify yourself so I'm getting pretty close here and there is a damage spot right so we're pretty close I'm gonna actually go a little bit above it because I come out in my spacesuit you don't have to get exactly I mean you can float around your spacesuit I'm just I'm just being exact oh, what a horrible noise we're gonna press control D to get up put on our fancy spacesuit now, I'm, my mouse is freely moving, so I'm going to press Shift-D to go into the steering mode. There's our culprit. I'm going to press Space. Oh, we might not be close enough. Let's get a little bit closer. Boom. Immediately repaired that spot. I'm scrolling my mouse wheel back to stop my forward progress. 
press backspace to stop. Click on my ship, shift D to request docking with my own shift. Ship, not shift. Better accept my docking request and lock me out of my ship. I'm just gonna go full bore right back into the hold. Perfect. And really this isn't even that annoying of a mission. Like it's it's just enough um, that it's able to make sense. Oh, here's a fun one. I am unable to control my ship with shift space. Okay, so this is an example of when controls get a bit wonky. I'm trying to press shift space in order to set the steering mode, but it doesn't work. I can left click and hold, but I'm gonna show you a way to get around this is to press control D, stand up for a second, get back in the seat. Sure enough, steering mode is back to working again. So definitely some bugs that they're still gonna be working out. I will say, uh, if you haven't encountered the bugs from EgoSoft in the past, this is nothing. This is honestly nothing compared to what it used to be. Is there a repair required right on the ground? Or was this just telling us where to go to? Okay, I'm a little confused. Maybe we only had to repair one spot. I'm gonna get out of the way, press backspace, map for M, and go to our mission manager. Oh, it's gone from the list and we've got money. So I guess it was repair only one spot. We repaired it. There actually was a little message in the bottom left hand corner, but I probably just didn't see it. If we wanted to see what that message said, we could go to our player information. And I think it's the logbook. Pairs needed, mission completed. 145,000 credits. So yeah, all we had to do is fly across the sector, get out of our ship, and stick a little bit of tape on it, and boom, we've got some money. Um, not all missions are like this. You will also encounter some difficulties finding missions at the start, because you know, look how far we flew across the sector before we found anything. So. A little bit of trouble there, but you know, I think ex exploration and, and missions are the easiest way to start out the game. So that being said, you may want to start the game in that explorer ship or give it a shot down the road to see if that's any better for you in terms of exploring and doing that initial setup. So I think I've covered the majority of things that I wanted to get through in the first video. Uh, I will take a look here and rewatch the video to make sure I've covered most of the basics. If you have any specific questions, please, please feel free to leave a comment in the video. Um, I will reply to you and definitely include more information in the next video. Or if I've got something wrong, what I'll do is probably just make a little annotation there with the correct information. So I do appreciate any feedback and constructive criticism as always because, hey, that's what we're here for, right? We want to give good information, not filthy, dirty lies. Okay, so I love how these stations are laid out sometimes. So uh, let's just go up here and I'll have a little park. I'm just gonna have a little sit down right, right, right over here. Also, by the way, if you want to look around your ship, you can press shift, uh, excuse me, F2. F2 again to get a different angle. That's so neat. I love that view. Okay. Sorry, I got, I got distracted by shiny things. So. We've covered the basics here. I think we've covered how to navigate, how to use the map, how to get missions, uh, how to walk around the station. And hopefully that's enough to get you going, just to get comfortable with the game. There's a lot of stuff, right? There's a lot of things to do. Um, I do hope the map is not too overwhelming. Don't worry too much if you're not understanding what's going on. It's okay. You're not gonna miss anything right off the bat. It's all gonna be there and we're definitely gonna get there as the series uh, of tutorials expands. So that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and put a cut in here and this video and I'll, I guess I'll just, um, I don't know which particular video I'm gonna go with next. Uh, probably something about navigation because in exploration because we do have to find out where the highway is. There's a major highway. It's a hu super huge hint there. I'll let you find it on your own, but it's an awesome highway. I encourage you to go around and look for it. <laughs> one, one final piece of advice I'll say, if you jump through a gate and the border's red, I highly recommend, if you're not comfortable with combat, to get back out of the system you're in. I'll leave it at that. The rest of it you can find on your own, but we'll definitely be doing more videos about uh, different topics coming up. So, again, thank you so much for your time and your patience. If you have any recommendations, please leave them in the comments below, and I will see you next video.